Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Harling. Today is Tuesday, January 5th, 2021. So I am here today to go over tonight's homework. At the top of this paper, it says distributive property. And you also see on the left-hand side, it says practice and homework lesson 4.4. So this is tonight's homework again at the bottom. This is page 213. And then I will do the back of the sheet, which is page 214. This is what we wrote in our agenda book today. So for Mrs. Graham's class and my class, this is the homework that you have been assigned. If you are watching the video, I am going to help you with some of the problems and then the rest you will do on your own. All right. So, number one, they did for you. The directions say, write one way to break apart the array. Then find the product. Now, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and show you what they did for number one. Here is an array, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six rows. All right, six rows going across, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares in each row. So this um, array represents six rows of seven, okay? So what they decided to do is they kept the seven this time, boys and girls, and they decided to break down the number six. So they broke down the number six into three and three, because you notice they kept the seven. So they showed us the answer, but they're missing one part. We know three times seven is 21, and three times seven again is 21, and if you add those together, you get 42. Now, the other thing that they didn't do, if I zoom out here just a little bit, it says write one way to break apart the array. This is how they broke it apart. But remember, you can also break it apart by drawing a line through the array to show two smaller arrays. So I'm gonna do that too, just because I wanna show you. So if this is six rows of seven and they wanna break it apart, actually, I'm gonna use a different color marker when I break it apart, just so you guys can see. So these, there's six rows going across. And if I wanna represent what's down here, three times seven and three times seven, I'm gonna count down three, one, two, three and I'm gonna break apart my array right there. So now the top array is three times seven, and the bottom array is also three times seven. So that's where they got it from, okay? So I guess with saying that, I'm also gonna do number two. So I'm gonna move over to number two, and we're gonna do that one as well. So pick up your pencil, and first let's look at how many are in the array. What is the multiplication equation? So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more and count. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven rows. Row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, row six, row seven. How many are in each row? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this array represents seven rows of eight, okay? Seven rows of eight. In this problem, Ms. Harling is gonna break down the number eight because it's the larger number and that's the one I wanna break apart. I'm gonna break apart the eight into four and four because four plus four makes eight. So what I'm gonna do now with my orange marker is I'm gonna make this big array into two smaller arrays. So I'm gonna count four over. One, two, three, four. And instead of doing a horizontal line going across like I did in number one, I'm gonna do a vertical line going down and I have separated it into two smaller arrays. This first array will be seven times four, and this side will also be seven times four. And then I will multiply to find the answers. Seven times four is 28, 
and seven times four again is also 28. And if I add those two together, let me zoom out a little bit here, I will have 56. So now I know the answer, which is 56. I'm sorry, boys and girls, that's not showing that great because of the glare of my lamp, but there we go, that's better. So my answer is 56. I broke it apart into two smaller arrays. I wrote the multiplication equation for both sides. I found the answer, the product. I added those products together and I got 56. Okay, now I'm gonna go toward the bottom and let's do number four. All right, so I'll zoom in again. It says, oops, move that over that way. Okay, a marching band has four rows of trumpeters with 10 trumpeters in each row. How many trumpeters are in the marching band? Use the distributive property to solve. So they don't want you just to multiply 10 and four, but those are the two numbers we're using. So you can circle 10 and four. We know that the word each tells us to multiply, but we're using the distributive property. So I'm gonna write this, but I'm gonna write it a little small. So I probably could, well, I'd like to zoom in just a little bit more, but I can't because then you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be able to see everything. So I'm gonna write 10 times four. And obviously the number Ms. Harling wants to break down is 10. What two numbers should I use? If you said five and five, you are correct. So I'm gonna use five and five to represent 10 and I will still use the number four to multiply. So on the line, I can say five times four plus five times four. And I know what that is when I skip count. Five times four is 20. And five times four again is 20. And I should be able to add that mentally in my head. I know that um, 20 plus 20 equals 40. So my answer should be 40, if you guys can't see that, okay? That's a little bit better. There's not that much of a glare. I don't know, maybe I should turn my lamp off. But we broke down the number 10 into five and five, and we multiplied it by four. Alrighty. Of course, I'm going to do the last one on the front of this page because I always do the writing with you. It says, what are some ways you could break apart seven times nine using the distributive property? Well, I'm definitely gonna break down the number nine. So this is what we would write. Now we're just gonna write it. We're not gonna show the work. We can, but we're gonna write it first because that's what it's asking us to do. So what are some ways you could break down seven times nine? I can, and we're gonna use the word distribute because that's what you're doing when you break something down. You're distributing it. It's just like if Miss Harling had 20 pieces of candy, I'm breaking that candy into, or I'm giving that candy away to 20 people so everybody gets the same. If I had 20 pieces, I would distribute or give those 20 pieces uh, pieces of candy to each of my 20 students. When you distribute, you're breaking it down or you're um, giving it away. So I can just distribute, excuse me, nine into five plus four. Then multiply five plus four by seven. This, I'm sorry if you guys can't see that. I'm gonna turn this off. Let's see if that's better. Yeah, that's better. I can distribute nine into five plus four. That's how I'm breaking it down. Then multiply five plus four by seven. This will give me, sorry if my screen is shaking. Okay, let me zoom out here a little bit. This will give me the answer. 
So I'll show you now while you're writing. Seven times nine. I broke nine into five and four. I'll write it over here. Seven times five plus seven times four because I'm using five and four for the number nine. Seven times five is 35. Seven times four is 28. When I add 35 and 28, I get 63. So now I know what, let me just move that over a little bit. Now I know what seven times nine is. I'll zoom out a little bit. It's 63. All right, I know I wrote a lot there, so I will stop for a minute and I will let you guys um, copy it. Now, I'm over my 10 minutes. I'm gonna try to keep this to 15 minutes, so I'll give you a few seconds to copy number five. Again, if I keep going and you're not done with number five, you know what to do. Pause the video, copy what you need to copy, and then you can hit play again when you're ready to follow along on the next page or on the back of this homework. So I'll give you a few more seconds and then I'm gonna keep going. If you're not ready, pause and finish writing what you need to write and then hit play again. I can distribute nine into five plus four, then multiply five plus four by seven. This will give me the answer. And then I showed you over here how to distribute the nine when you broke it into five plus four. Okay, I'm going to the other side. Again, pause if you're not ready. All right, let's move down to number one and two. Let's see, complete the number sentence. No, nope, I'm not gonna do number one. You need to break down the number seven. I showed you on the other side how to do that, so please use the distributive property to do seven times six. It says, what is one way to break apart this array? I'm not gonna do this one either. I wanna see what you come up with. So you also have to draw a line somewhere on this array and break it apart. All right, this is a review. All right, I'm not gonna do this one. You have to round to the nearest 10, you should be able to do that. Um, so remember, when you're looking at 448, you're not rounding to the nearest 100, you're rounding to the nearest 10. So you need to look at the eight to see what to do to the four and write your answer. All right, I'm not doing number four. There's double zeros here. So remember, more on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. If there's nothing there, go to the next place value. So you're gonna to have to go to the hundreds to figure out this answer. All right, not doing this one, very easy. You just have to add to find your answer. So it looks like, boys and girls, I'll do number six. And that's it, my friends. So it says, which sport do exactly six students play? So here you've got sports that students play, football, basketball, excuse me, football, baseball, basketball, and soccer. You have the bars going across and you have the numbers at the bottom that tell you the length of each bar. Which bar represents six students who play that sport? If I look at the number six and I go up, it's football because that's where the bar for football stops. It stops at the number six. So my answer is football. All right, so the rest of it you have to do on your own. Thank you for watching the video. I hope it helped. For those of you who didn't watch the video, good for you if you were able to try to do it on your own. That's awesome. I will see you all tomorrow. Don't forget my class. We, I do have a meeting tomorrow, and I believe Mrs. Graham does too. So all the third grade teachers have a meeting in the morning. We will meet with you to tell you what you need to do. After our meeting, we will be back. Okay, have a good night. Bye.